This is the ultimate Linux productivity guide. So let's just get straight into it. I don't want to waste your time. The biggest way that you can just be way more productive on Linux, and this is going to hurt some people, is stop changing your configs. Okay, stop changing your configs. Every time you change your config and you're like, oh, but I'm going to try out this color scheme. I'm going to try out this window manager or this or that. You're losing productivity. I can understand, like, maybe if you haven't found your ideal setup, but honestly, I'd say it's better to settle onto something and just be okay with it than trying to find that perfect ultimate setup that will always, you know, you'll always love. Because you have to understand the more you're like changing it and you're changing, maybe like if you're just changing the colors, that's okay. Like it's whatever, like you are like just wasting time on that. But if you're changing the entire setup in terms of like, you're going from DWM to i3 to some other window manager. So the bindings are different. You have to learn a new, like you have to always develop new muscle memory. You never know exactly how to do one thing. It's just, it's really sapping your productivity. So it's much better to just stick on, just pick one, pick one. Then you're like, yeah, I could probably stay with this for a very long time. I wouldn't, won't have to change it. I won't feel like I have to change it. Learn it as best as you can, you know, learn like, you know, let's say if you're doing DWM, learn how you can like spawn windows and just like, you know, all the, all the features, like just learn all that. And then, you know, just stick to it. Now, alongside that, if you want to have a setup that you're more likely to keep for a very long time, I would recommend go for neutral colors. Look at my setup, very neutral. The only thing that really changes the entire setup, which I always advocate for is always have your wallpaper be the main thing have the rest of your setup just be like a complement to it. But because my setup is very neutral, if I change the wallpaper right now to, I don't know, this wallpaper, Dahlia, changes the vibe. It's bright, it's, you know, it's it's literally all based on the wallpaper. If I change it to this one, it's like more dark, moody. Go for neutral colors. Those neutral colors, they'll make it a lot easier to just like stay on that setup and not want to change it. And alongside that, if you want to find the perfect wallpaper for your setup, then check out my video that I made on wallpapers. Now, the next best thing that you can be doing for your productivity is honestly using a tiling window manager. As you can see right here, if you don't know what that is, it's essentially, I don't even know how to explain it. Essentially, the window manager is the program that sorts out like how your windows define this and that. And tiling window managers, this is in like a floating mode, more like akin to like, let's say Windows, but typically you have it in this mode. So this is tiling mode. And if I spawn in a window, it makes it full screen. If I spawn another window at half, you know, you can just keep spawning in windows and you can shift it to how you like. And essentially the benefit of this is let's say I have like, so one brave tab open. It's, it's a lot easier to just sort out your windows, you know, just go from here. You can use the keyboard. Um, let's say like, oh, I actually wanted this here. I can just move it around. It's a lot easier and you can't do this. At least you can't do this easily with, even a mouse. And the whole point is that you can do this very quickly and you only have to use the keyboard. And the benefit of using the keyboard is that well, the tiling window manager let, makes, and the benefit of the tiling window manager is that it makes you use your keyboard like 90% of the time. Ideally, you should never touch your mouse because the mouse is like, you know, you're typing and then, oh, okay, okay I gotta go here. No, the whole point is like, boom, you can just like do a lot of the things that you do with a mouse, but way quicker on the keyboard. Because the keyboard, your thing is already there and it's only a couple presses, whereas the mouse, it's like, it's an own, it's its own, it's its own thing in, entirely. Like you got to move it and it's completely different. So ideally, if you, so ideally, if you use a tiling window manager, let's say DWM, let's say DWM like I am, or well, i3, there's, there's so many out there. And essentially that's the whole benefit of a tiling window manager. If you download one, you use one, and you really learn how to use it, how to be as productive, maybe even you add like some own like patches or like modifications, then ideally you should be increasing your amount of time, like actually doing the work, actually just like, you know, moving windows around and just doing what you need to do instead of just having to like, oh, okay, let me move the window here to there to, it, it saves you time in that. Now I find that whenever I have to use windows or Mac, I'm just frustrated. I'm like frustrated using it and then like moving the window around. It's just, it's so, even now, like they'll have some things where you can like put the window into the corner and like a full screen and stuff. I just prefer just, DWM, you just do everything. It does everything for you. You don't even have to do everything like simple. If you're now possibly thinking about maybe using DWM like I have here, then I have a full 50 minute guide explaining everything, goes into detail about how to download, patch, install, rise, everything. Everything that you can think of, it's answered in that video. Check it out. Now this next piece of advice is probably more applicable if you're on Arch or another rolling distribution, but it is to update infrequently or update only when you need to, maybe when you're installing new software, something like that, then yeah, okay, update. But just updating like every day, every second, who knows, like some update comes out and breaks your system. It's not common. It's actually not common. Honestly, it's pretty stable. The amount of people that are oh, Arch is unstable, it just breaks. Not true. It's definitely not true. But 
you also don't want to be in that kind of incident where you update and then boom, like your system is gone. Typically, when there is like some issues, I've had some issues when I update. It's usually nothing crazy. It's pretty easy to fix. Sometimes you just have to roll back and update and you're chilling. Sometimes it's a little bit more complicated and it just sucks out time. And usually when there is a broken update, it usually gets fixed pretty quickly as well. So why don't you just like not update? Although there's always the chance that if you do update infrequently, when you happen to update, it will just break. But you're minimizing the chance by not always updating. And our next, and our next is aliases. And aliases essentially... It's like a mini script. It's a mini script that you can type into your, what do you call it? Like the shell. Yeah, you can have it in your shell. And essentially it's like a little script that runs, but it's very short typically. And it just does, it does a longer command in like a short thing. So for example, if you want to download something on Arch, you have to type in pacman-s. This just, when, when you're doing it a lot, it gets annoying. So what I did is I literally just set it to P and then I can just type in whatever command. So I can type in P-S. And then, you know, it's just removing that Pac-Man to P. That saves you time. Like, think about it. The amount of times that you're going to update in this, why do you have to type in the rest of the Ac Ac man Like, you know, like, why don't you just type P? Simple. Other things, like, for example, if I want to update my phone, like, if I want to pull all the images from my phone, it takes a whole thing. Like, you got to mount it, do this, do that. I don't even remember. Now, if I have my phone plugged in, I, I don't right now, all I'd have to type in is iPhone update. And then it just gets all my phone... It, it, it gets all the photos from my phone and then it just boom puts it on my computer and then it disconnects and it's it's all good. So little things like that, processes that you'll do frequently, it's good to have them in an alias. Just saves you time, there's no need to. And I'll quickly show you how to do it. So I'm using Zish, so if I type in Zish RC, then we'll bring up my like Zish config file. And obviously I have a lot of things like and obviously I have a lot of different like things that I've set up here, a lot of configuration. But essentially, you just pick a spot and you type an alias and then you can type in the alias for whatever you want. And typically, you can do something like, OK, whenever you copy, make sure it does the I flag, which is like interactive. Like it will ask you, like, are you sure you want to overwrite this or do this or whatever? Um, but then other times, like I'll have something like something like, OK, like if I want to get the weather, I never actually use this. I don't know why I have this. But if I want to get the weather, then it can do this curl that we dot in. And then it pulls it up, but honestly, I never even use this, so it doesn't even matter. Or here, like for example, I've got this experimental command. I'm still like working on this, but if I type in Kindle Anki, when I plug in my Kindle, it'll get the files or change the directory or like do all these things and essentially it'll turn all these like vocabulary cards into Anki cards. So you could be pretty creative with it and you can save a lot of time because then you don't have to be like, oh, I have to go to this and that. You can just type in the one command, boom, it does everything for you. If you want to learn more about aliases, check out my video. On the next, and to be honest, I don't know why I put this so low, but the terminal is super powerful. If you learn how to use the terminal instead of just a file browser, you're going to be way better. The terminal has, the terminal is literally everything. That's what I realized, that the terminal is literally everything in Linux and that every other application is just a terminal, but you know, just like with a GUI. For example, the terminal is, you know, it is a file browser in a way. It is a file browser, but it's actually more than that. But for example, if you want to change your files, you want to copy, all the commands are here. Copy, RM, everything. So again, if you want to check out, so honestly, so honestly, if you want to get good with Linux, learn the terminal, learn how to use it, practice using it. If you want to get good at Linux, honestly, just use the terminal for everything. That's what I recommend. Just try and use the terminal for everything. Figure out how to do things. And not only that, there's just so many ways to delete stuff. Like, not only that, there's like so many ways to just increase your efficiency. It's like way more efficient in the Linux terminal. For example, I remember my home directory was colored. It had so many like random files, like .mp4s, dot, like it just had random files from like video editing. And for example, I had a lot of files that were the Caden Live project. So it was like .caden Live. A very easy way to delete, like if it's on Thana or some file browser, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Things might be scattered or at best, like it's going to be like ne next to each other. All you have to do is type in rm dash Caden Live and you're done. <laughs> No, that's it. And then you can put some more flags like, okay, and just force remove, like force everything. Like, don't ask me, like, I, know, I want to delete this. And then it would just delete everything. So little commands like that and how, like using regex, once you learn regex and the terminal, the productivity goes crazy. Yeah, and if you want to learn more about the terminal, check out my last video. And we've got scripts. Scripts are like aliases, but they're a bit more complicated. For example, I've already done a whole bunch of videos about scripts. Maybe you already know about some scripts, but... For example, if you check the price of Bitcoin a lot, you know, you go to the browser, you go this and that. I remember that's what I was doing. It took forever. Now all I have to do is type in BTC 
wait like three seconds boom i got all the price i've got all the things that i would be interested in and hold is a simple script where curl and then there's just a bit of like jq so learning how to do things like this again just going to save you a lot of time again this is like a whole like different dimension in itself and again if you want to really get like good at this you also have to know the terminal there's like no way that you can be good at scripting but bad at terminal because the scripting is literally using the terminal again like i change my wallpaper a lot i've got a whole script to change my wallpaper i don't have to like type in the command specifically i can just like you know i get a nice menu and then i can like select and boom whatever it just changes it so it's like very very easy if you don't know if you should use a script or not thinking about like what tasks do i do often that kind of takes a while that i could just do like a lot simpler if so, if there's a task like that, then script it and figure out how. Again, if you check out some of my older videos, a whole bunch of them talk about like scripting and different scripts. And it kind of shows you like the intuition, like how you can start getting into it. Alongside that, nowadays you can also be using ChatGPT to kind of like build a foundation. Now, sometimes it's not always working because, you know, it's just grabbing random scripts from like the internet. But sometimes it will and, you know, just a little bit of modification, then it just works. Now, this one is going to be maybe a little bit more left field, but it is to also tailor your browser to productivity so for example i'll show you this if i go to youtube uh you're going to see that my youtube experience is completely different it's blank completely blank there's nothing here it's just there's nothing hide your feed honestly hide your feed why should you have all these like random thumbnails like kind of distracting you imagine like you want to learn like let's say like oh i'm just a high school student and i want to learn how to differentiate a function or something I click on YouTube and oh, now there's like, you know, the, all these thumbnails of these videos I'm actually more interested in. How are you going to then type in the yeah, derivative? Like, yeah, maybe you will most of the time, but you're going to be distracted. Again, if, if you want to hide your feed, all, all it is, is just this distraction free YouTube. Just very easy uh, extension. There's other ones like hide YouTube thumbnails. And there's also like hide YouTube thumbnails. So like if I type in derivative formula or something like that, then it's all the videos, but no thumbnails. It's purely title based. This way you're, re you're really thinking like, okay, which one has the best title? There's no views or anything. You're just judging it based on the title. What do you think will be more helpful? Not based on which one is the most pretty. You know what I'm saying? Alongside with the distraction for YouTube, if I click on a video like differentiation formula and then I scroll down, it's not going to show like any of the side videos recommended or the comments. And you can like tailor it to how you want it. You can turn things on and off. But honestly, I'm not going to lie. Like how many times do you just watch a video and then scroll to the comments? Like, why are you allowing yourself to just like be distracted like that? We're not even distracted. Why are you allowing yourself to be like, why can you not like just focus on the video? Like, try and just actually watch the video, not try and get extra dopamine by seeing what people are saying. Now, finally, if you like the way that my setup looks, you know, you really vibe with it or you want to get something similar, but you don't really know what to do, like how to really start like rising Linux setup. Then you can book a one on one call with me. It's the top link in the description below alongside that. But beyond that, if you like this video, please like subscribe. It helps me out and I'll see you next time. Peace.